these are fight announcements. Some of them are call outs and some of them are beefs. Uh, but these are my favorite thing to talk about. Probably I like talking about these more than the cards. It's because it's just such an early look. It's, we hear the name and we say how we feel about it. So uh, probably my favorite thing to do in the spaces. So UFC Saudi Arabia, June 22nd, got Abu Azatar and Dennis Talulian. Uh, and Shao Long versus Ch- Chang Ho Lee. I don't know them, but we are going to get to know these these Asian fighters. Um, their names will start becoming more familiar um, as the as the road to the UFC program keeps developing over there. Because I don't think it's going anywhere. So, did anybody watch that? I do. Sometimes I just watch. Dude, that shit was so awesome. Yeah, sometimes, I, like, I don't try to watch it with all the translations. Like, I, the one season I remember where you kind of had to, I did fast forward and just watch the fights, but it was fucking great. Like, I lo- I loved it. Like, I, I'm not Dude, I keep, I I keep it. saying. It tough, but I liked it. Dude, I keep, I keep saying it, and I want to try to mark my words, man. The wrestlers coming out of Japan, they are going to be a motherfucking force. Satsuro Tara is just the beginning of these motherfuckers. Yeah, why did he get canceled with Tim Elliott, bro? He got a main event, I think. Did he? He's facing Alex Perez, Ooh. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's gonna be a good one. That's a, this is gonna be a perfect example. Tara is gonna submit that guy. Yeah, they hid his ass from Tim Elliott. Tim Elliott was gonna beat him the fuck up. <laughs> Usman. Yeah, that's a tough fight, but yeah. Did you say Abu Azaitar? Is is that who you said? Is At, Abu Azaitar. He um he's scheduled to fight uh, Dennis Talu in next month. Yeah, June twenty second. Oh, I thought. You, who, Oh, my bad. I thought you had said some other name from uh, the Road to UFC. I don't know what the fuck I'm listening to. My bad. My bad. No, no. I, I went right into the Road to the UFC. Uh, Eor Pateria is out. Uh, Shara Bullet will now fight Jolton Luderbach. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nermagna Madoff out. Fareed Basharat will now fight Montel Jackson. Um, I mean, I think that fight probably still favors uh, Fareed Basharat, but yep, it's I, 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 I'm not mad at it. You know, like that's a that's a decent replacement on fairly short notice. Like it's not, you know, I think that's a good fight still. Is, like I got no complaints. Is Fareed the one that lost, or was Javid the one that lost? It was Javid. This is Fareed, bro. He's the better. He's the better of the brothers. Hey, Trust hey. me. Dude's fucking phenomenal. You know what we say, Remember, man? When there's two Fareed brothers, you find is, the shitty one and you don't bet on us. Listen, I figured out how to remember it, bro. Fareed is first. He is better. Okay. Is he the shorter one? First That's a good one. He's the shorter one. No, nah, no. Nah, first. He, he's the better one, bro. He's just Fareed first. You know what I mean? Like That's how I correlate the name to the word. So first, Fareed. First bash around. They're, that's how I remember them. They're the both 135ers, right? Yeah, they're both 135ers. Yeah, but uh, Javid, no, Fareed has won up to 145, right? One of them fought at 145 before. Before. That may have been Javid, but yeah, they're both Bantamweight. They're both nice, anyways. This is a Bantamweight they're fight. They're both good fighters, in my eyes. They are. Yeah, but Farid is so much better. Oh my god! I remember when I first watched Farid, I was like, "Holy shit! I'm I'm his fan for life." Yeah, he's a fucking beast. There's just no there's no way around it. Um, Cody Durden versus Bruno Silva at UFC Vegas ninety four on July twentieth. I like Cody Durden, man. So yeah, fuck yeah, I like watching him fight. You gonna be reminded who Bruno Silva is though? Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not like even being. I didn't even mean it like that. I just meant like if Cody Dern and it is in a fight, I know it's going to be a fight I like seeing. Bruno Silva is a great fighter, so like, good fight. Like I'm happy to see that. That's a good fight. Um, not not very short notice though. I guess I thought that one was closer. So two months out on that one. Um, UFC 303 June 29th International Fight Week. 
Charles Jordan will fight Gene Silva. And Khalil Roundtree is out of his fight with Jamal Hill. No replacement announced unless something went off that I didn't see in the last couple hours. Oldberg said that he no, yeah, Oldberg said he wants to hop in for that fight. But um quick question. What's your thoughts on the Roundtree taking that thing that he said that he didn't know? So I believe him. It just makes sense. I just it makes sense. His last tests were clean. Um, it looks like he came forward right away. I think he was trying to avoid a suspension. I think he was trying to get it to the point, which it might be, you know, when it's out of his system, he's good to go again. Um, but that's the same shit that a few people have been popped for. It really is an over-the-counter thing. And there are heavy arguments that there's no advantage to taking it. It's just a banned substance because I would assume it's one of those things you can compile with other substances. I will also be fair and say Khalil has looked like he's been on the juice for about fucking two years now. So, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> that boy, is, I've been wondering, like, you getting secret juice from Paulo, bro? What the fuck are you doing over there? Uh, Ozzy, i seen you in with your hand up, bro. Are you wait too long? How you doing, bud? Hey, fellas, how's it going? I must have missed the start, huh? Um, yeah, I was just, you just kind of cleared up what I was going to ask about the Roundtree situation, you know, I always look to see, is it something common or is it something injectable, you know, but uh, obviously that's not the case. So hopefully he can, uh, he can get a return. Um, you just wonder how, you know, this new testing system, are they trying really hard to get somebody, you know, a lot of us are kind of doubting them and, and, and throwing them under the bus a little bit saying it's open season. So yeah, I don't know, maybe they're looking for something, make an example out of somebody. I don't know, but hopefully if it's legit, if it's something, you know, found in protein powder, hopefully, yeah, our boy gets back in the cage as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, a quick note, Ryan Garcia says he drank, um, what is the, what is, what is the Paul brothers drink? What the fuck is the name of that thing? Prime. He said he drank prime and then pissed dirty. I was cracking up. Oh, he that. needs to Better sue them motherfuckers, man. <laughs> he needs to get that, that was a, money. <laughs> better times oh yeah i was just gonna say about the testing i'm not from what i've heard like because fighters have come out and said that like um they're getting tested just as much as you saw as you saw so i don't know like what's the big difference between whatever they're going with now and usada back then the program is very different yeah, the uh, test amount, the the program is very, very, very different. Is it just as far as what they're able to take? Yeah, so basically what the UFC did is went through and basically everything that's a shelf product that is for recovery of an athlete, um, you know, common shit that everybody takes, they took a lot of those compounds off of the ban list, and they should. They took off a lot of things that and they changed the regulations about like when a doctor prescribes something how quickly you can get back into competition like when you have a leg break and it is probably the connor thing but it set precedence for them so there is a lot more stuff allowed but it is not like these dudes can be on trt it's still a program that most it's still probable i would say it is still definitely the most strict program in all of United States professional sports. I mean, because that's what it sounded like. Like, there was, it, it didn't sound like people were just going to be able to juice up freely. No, people don't realize USADA was Olympic level. USADA was, no, you can't take protein powders. Yeah, but it's protein powders. And when your muscles rip, you take proteins. No, you, you can't. Oh, you can only take certain protein powders. Like, bro, if it's sold in the store, and there's no performance enhancing thing, uh, no performance enhancing compounds in it. Basically, this program allows it. It's a healthy. It, it's a program that focuses on the health of the fighters. Aussie. So I'm more because I know you do your research on this. What about the? They still having to tell them their location and check in and 
I'm going to be at this gym at this time and all that bullshit? Or is it just back to random testing? We go to, you know, they rock up at a gym, there's six fighters there, we'll test all six. Or are they still having to do all that, you know, location stuff, three strikes, it's an automatic fail, all that kind of shit? Uh, so they do still have to do some type of whereabouts, but it's not like that fucking... It's not the way USADA was. Um, I know that. I know it's it's much different. I don't know. I remember reading about an app being a possibility that would change things for them and like all types of shit. Um, but I don't know what went into policy there. But I know that they're, they definitely loosened up the restrictions on it because it was a huge concern for fighters. Again, Olympic level is different. Olympic level is making sure Nobody in no country, nowhere on earth can figure out how to manipulate a compound into being performance enhancing and looking a certain way on a test. UFC level, it's a league level of playing field. Let athletes be healthy. Um, UFC 304, July 27. Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad. Congratulations to Connor J. Uh, it will be a main event. Bilal was told on Instagram and people were trolling him like, bro was surprised. He was surprised it was the main and he was surprised it got announced. He already knew the fight was coming. He's already in camp. He's training with Islam. Um, probably the reason that they had to bring Khabib in, Islam probably called him like, bro, this dude sucks. He's so bad. We got to help him all the time. I need you here to help. So that's probably why Magna Madoff was brought in. You know, because Bilal's there. and uh, But the fight's going down. And Connor, so Leon has already called out Connor. And Bilal is already in a beef with Sean Strickland. So these dudes are already kind of looking past each other. Connor says, I don't know about either one of them. They're both decision fighters. The welterweight division is in a bad spot. Probably 150, 200,000 buys on that card, if that. That's what he says. So, um, yeah, they should just focus on fighting each other. Fuck, man. I'm like, Leon wants to fight Connor and give him a triple champ shot. Fuck, man. Bilal wants to fight Sean Strickland if he's the champion. I'm starting to become frustrated myself. With the fucking, just make the 165 division so we, it would help. It, the, the belt and the ranking system where people could move, fuck it would help. Zabet. Hey, I just want to give a shout out to Bilal. He finally got his wish come true. Got the title shot. Who did it better, Bilal or Michael Chandler? <laughs> I don't know. They both, I mean, I guess Chandler because he was like two fights and already got it or one fight. He ain't had to win like 10 in a row. He did tough though and then got told no. Oh yeah, yeah. If you if you're talking about that, then <laughs> that's bro, he, he was like, fuck you, I'm waiting. Yeah, fuck he you, waited it out. I'm waiting. He got it too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was like, I got it on a napkin in a bar one night, and fuck you guys, I'm holding out. Oozman. Chandler did it better because uh, he's getting his payday at the end of the day. Um, Bilal got screwed over because they successfully waited him out. Um, I always shit on fucking uh, Leon for, I don't know, taking a fucking six, nine-month break between fights and it annoys the shit out of me. Um, But uh, he's the way more active fighter when it comes to this. And... uh, Bilal's already 36 years old, and uh, like I said, they successfully waited him out, sat him on the bench. He's going to be coming in cold versus uh, somebody who seems to be better uh, all the way around. They they really did a good job of fucking over Bilal here. Oh, yeah, and he's been trying to stay in camp and stay ready this whole time. Listen, there comes a point where your body starts to burn out and go into, like, autopilot. I know about it from just being a guy who used to be super into fitness uh, before my injuries and listening to fighters talk about it. 
Yeah. Uh, YB and then Connor J. So <clears throat> whenever this fight got announced, I actually went to the local library because I don't have a printer. And I printed out a picture of Leon. And I kiss it every night before I go to sleep, along with Corey Sandhagen, hoping that he'll knock Bilal out. Uh, and we never have to hear about him again. I don't know how well that's going to go for you, bro, if I'm being honest. but uh... He said Corey Sandhagen? Oh, wait, what's he have to do with? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Connor J. What's up? Is this still loud? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you better. It's loud, but I can hear you. Fuck it. Get after it. I'll make it quick. Uh, shout out to Bilal. Got the kind of shot he deserves. Uh, just so awesome. I was told forever this fight wouldn't happen. Uh, shout out to Bilal. Just, oh, man. That's so awesome. And a shout out to Tom Aspinall. That's, that's a really great card. That uh, Manchester card. It is a great card, and I think it's going to get another fight, and I think it's going to be a a really great card. Um, yeah, that's just that's just what I think. Uh, better times. Uh, yeah, just want to say like uh, the whole inactivity on Leon Edwards. I don't think that's on him because if you listen to Dana White, he he says that he keeps saying yes to any of the fighters. And the Bilal fight, like, we all know he deserved it. He's been deserved a title shot. And I think he is, from the first fight, it was clear that Leon was the way better fighter. But his performances since then, we know that Bilal is going to be a way tougher fight for him now. Especially way tougher than Kobe Covington provided. But it was just the fact that no one really cared to see him fight for the title. Like, we all knew he deserved it, but no one gave a shit. Well, and I'm not going to just, I don't want to start a, in my bagging on Bilal Ward, but the truth is, he's not the draw here. It's Leon Edwards. It's Tom Aspinall. And likely, yeah. and likely. That means no one gave a shit. <laughs> yeah. Likely, we're likely going to see MVP versus Ian Gary added to that card. So. You know, that's going to be a fucking insane card. Um, yeah, so they're calling each other out. They both say they've already agreed to the fight and they're waiting to hear back. Oh, my bad. I didn't hear you. Who is he fighting? Or maybe? Ian Gary and MVP. Oh, I feel bad for Ian Gary. Yeah, so uh, Ian says he accepted Colby, Buckley, Brady. And a bunch of other guys, he said he most recently accepted Michael Page, and he's waiting to hear back. And then Page, just yesterday, I think it was, said that he has accepted the fight, and he's waiting to hear back from the UFC. And they're both talking UFC 304. Ian Gary has made it very clear he will fight anybody to be on UFC 304. It is very, very important to him. Usman. Yeah, don't get your hopes up. They are not making that fight. That's uh, that's the dumbest shit that the UFC could do, and they know what they're doing. Um, they have two guys from that side of the country or that side of the world, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, both with star power that they want to push in the same division. They're... No way in hell that they're making that fight. And uh, I can already hear all the uh, crybabies in the fan base talking about UFC doesn't make the right fights. They don't make the matchups. Wait, themselves. not making that fight or not making it for that card? They're not making that fight at all. Like, just think about it. It makes no fucking sense why they would put Ian Gary versus MVP. You only have a little bit of juice to squeeze out of MVP now. And uh, why would you do it to kill another person from uh, that same area of the world? Like, it it makes zero sense, especially if you're going to do it to push Gary or vice versa to push MVP in a fight that could most likely be boring, them striking at a distance. It makes no sense that they make that fight. Um, I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. I could see why they would for that card if you had Aspinall it, it blades does not matter if you have Leon um over there it doesn't matter who he fights unless it's one of the two guys we're talking about uh if you put 
plus from like the American base pay per view buying. If you put Ian Gary and MVP on that card, it's that's a major card. I mean, that's a straight off of UFC Conor McGregor card. You're you're gonna fucking still kill it. Everybody's still gonna want to see that card. So I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying I could see why the UFC would would want the fight there financially. Um, what else got announced here? So UFC, oh, we're still on UFC 304. Bobby Green versus Patty Pimblett was announced. Um, I'm taking Bobby. I'm taking Patty. Easy. I'm taking Bobby. Easy cap, bro. Easy cap. I'm taking I'm not easy. No, no, I hear you. The, he honestly, he stands a good chance because he's going to sit in the middle of that ring and he's going to apply the pressure the whole three rounds. But with this plus money on Patty, I got to take it. Uh, I mean, at plus money, if that if that's how you're feeling. How is he going to win? What's that better? How is Patty going to win? Yeah, I mean, I ain't got your answer. I That's what I'm saying to him. If it's just because you feel that plus money, you could get something back. I'm not mad at you, but Bobby, Bobby is going to beat the fucking brakes off Patty Pimblett. I can't believe the UFC made that fight. I can't believe they made that fight. I'm taking Bobby. I'm taking Patty. I'm taking over. Fuck picking a side. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Bobby and then play Bobby by decision. I'm not going to lie about that. YB? I really like Bobby by KO. But Patty is really good at just coming forward with like autistic combos. And that can be an issue for Bobby. But other than that, I'm I'm on the Bobby side. Bro, have you seen his head movement? Nobody has seen his head movement. Nobody has seen his head movement. You heard me better? What'd you say? Nobody has seen his head movement. I'm talking about Bobby. Like, Bobby has some really slick shit. I was talking about Patty. (laughs) Patty's not going to be able to touch Bobby. Bobby's going to (laughs) fuck him up all the whole fight. I think the KO is a good prop. Bro, Patty bounces up and down. For it's for Bobby, it's gonna be like a carnival game. Just time it in the middle. Just time it in the middle. Just time it in the middle. That I easy cap. Bobby Knuckles beats or Bobby fucking Green beats the shit out of Patty Pimblet. Uh interim champ Tom Aspinall will defend his belt against Curtis Blades. Um we kind of already talked about it at the beginning, so I'm I'm just not going to dig back into it. Um, the irony, if Curtis wins, will be the best part. Uh, short of that, I'm, I'm taking time. Uh, Long Ran will fight Raymond Tavares. Not, you know, not a big fight. Uh, I said Ian Gary in this deal. Oban Elliott will fight Preston Pe- Parsons on 304. It's a good card, man. It's a good card. I still got to say one more big fight, and it's it's a big card. Uh, John Jones tweeted Madison Square Garden on November 9th. We talked about that. Uh, Colby Covington is calling for Charles Oliveira. Charles says he wants to do it. Um, Charles Oliveira will fucking kill Colby Covington. I that's Colby just trying to be smart enough to grab a bag because he's washed. Um, yeah, that, that's that's all I see there. Um, in other promotions, Chael Sonnen. Well, hold on. Julio Chavez Jr., 53-6, and six, will box Darren Till on the undercard of the Mike Tyson-Jake Paul fight. Um, didn't we just talk about Darren Till probably getting on that card? He said he wanted on that card. Didn't we just talk about that? Um I don't think he adds any value to the set to 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 people wanting to tune in. Um, I guess because it's free on Netflix, I'm wrong. There will be fans of his that are like, "Oh, yeah, Darren Till's on there too." But if it was a pay per view card, he would add nothing to it. 
I'm not trying to be an asshole. Um, Did you hear that? Um, he's trying to get back in the UFC at some point in his uh, life. <laughs> so he has a handshake agreement with them, according to when he left, that um he can come back. They let him out of his contract, out of his contract. He's a free man. He didn't fight it out. Um, they released him because he asked them to. And he says that he's, you know, he has a handshake deal that he gets to go back. He had to rack up some wins, though. Yeah, like, I think it was one of those agreements. Like, if I go out there and I get my shit together, then... You know, the UFC said they'll be happy to have me back. Mike Perry's also hinting that he's going to get a one-fight deal. I don't know why. I don't know what for. Like, putting him on 300 or something might have been cool, but he's he's talking about getting a one-fight UFC deal. Um, I just, I don't fucking get what for. But BKFC, very possible. Very possible. All right, last fight announcement of the night, and then we'll just look at 203 or 302 a little bit uh, before we get out of here. Chael Sonnen is getting another shot at the Spider, Anderson Silva. Uh, the two will box in Sao Paulo, Brazil, five rounds, two minutes apiece, 216 pounds, in front of a black tie crowd invite only of 600 or less. Silva has said this will be his final fight in Brazil. Still leaving the, the door open for a fight out of Brazil. But this will be his final deal in Brazil. Uh, people were talking about Terry Crews announcing the fight and Anderson announcing it back. And Chael played it up like, oh, I didn't know that was promoting. I, I really thought I lost the fight. But I think they knew all along. Um, yeah, there's a little more on that one. But better times. Go ahead. Actually, that was going to be my question about Terry Crews because I was like, I saw the video where Terry Crews was calling him out and then Chell Sonnen all of a sudden called him out. So I didn't know if it was official or not. Yeah, so apparently it was uh, like a publicity deal. And I wouldn't be surprised if Terry Crews is there uh, doing camera work. Like, he's great on camera, good personality, uh, like kind of hosting the little the deal. I wouldn't be surprised at all, to be honest. Uh yeah, it would just make sense to keep him involved. Um, you know, it sure stirred up some quick traffic when he said he was fighting Anderson. So, Zabet. For me, I think it's, it's just kind of crazy how the UFC, like, they create stars kind of like, because, like, this is an old UFC fight, and, like, this fight possibly could sell. And, like, same with George Masvidal versus uh, Nate Diaz. It's just it's kind of crazy. Well, that's a lot of what where my argument comes in for what the UFC does for people. And everybody bitches about the fighter pay, and I'm not I'm not going to start that argument, but the UFC is taking the money and changing legislation and changing, you know, keeping drug safety rules, but funding a program that allows the athletes to take advantage of things they should be able to take advantage of. Uh, they're building performance institutes like... Um, you know, it's, they, they're doing all of this in efforts to keep these fighters healthy and give them longevity. And as they work out deals with places like BKFC and places for them to go, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm whatever. So hold on. I got, I need one second guys. I never pause, but I need, I need five seconds. Ten Who's seconds. Damn, did did I have my hand up? Because I was literally about to press the hand up button because I was gonna ask you a question. Um, yeah, so uh open, open, open question to everybody. Uh he didn't want to make it about fighter pay. Uh luckily it was on the tip of my tongue. I'll make it about fighter pay. Uh we talked about the Maria Agapova thing going on earlier. She's uh on the verge of going homeless. Um she's won two two fights in the UFC. Uh, what should she be getting paid? People want to complain about the 12 and 12 contracts. Um, just a quick little Google search here. Uh, in 2020, she got uh, $20,000 uh, um, normal purse and then an extra 10000 for a winning. Uh, someone of that level, what should Maria Agapova be getting paid? 
So weirdly, my wife, because she's, you know, she's around when I'm writing up the spaces and stuff. She said, everybody says Dana White pays them like shit. And I said, he does. And then I did the 30 second explanation of the performance institutes and shit. And then I said, uh, the other thing to understand is you're an amateur fighter. And the UFC brings you in and they promise you to offer you three fights in a year. And if they don't, they have to pay you. They fucking have to pay you if they don't offer you three. So you're offered three fights in a year. And even if you have a low-end contract, you will make over $100,000 that year. If you win two of those three fights, you will make over $100,000. Um, there, you know, because you get more, you know, it's, you get more than your pay. You get the, the, the little bit that comes from venom and you know there's a few other kickbacks they get right so you'll make over a hundred grand and you'll be eligible for a new contract i have to say i'm an amateur fighter or a pro-am meaning we all know that cage warriors is pro and we all know that their very top level is not really UFC ready, but the people who break through are. Um, but, you know, you're still kind of like pro amateur at that point. So you get to come into the UFC and you basically get a six figure contract for one year. If you don't take those fights, if that shit doesn't work out for you, the UFC's got 600 fucking fighters on roster. Um, you got a year to make yourself worth something and make a bag and figure it out. I. I don't know her situation, but I, I can't over sympathize with her until I know her whole situation. Za bets. Um, for me to answer Usman's question, like I feel like every fighter, like girl, guy, day of the fight, if they're fighting like in a big arena or something, pay per view, fifty K each. And if you win, the win bonus, another fifty K. But at least a minimum of fifty K plus all the incentives like free health or whatever free hospital after and um it, it kind of brings me back to the Nganu thing because like Nganu did a smart decision by like leaving because he left and made 30 million dollars off two boxing matches so like imagine if he stayed in the UFC they said that he won't even like his whole lifetime of fighting he wouldn't even make that much and he made it in like less than a year yeah, but he went over to PFL because he wanted fighter health insurance, and he didn't get it. And now the UFC gets fighters health insurance, and the math is two boxing matches and a PFL fight, and he'll have made about $35 million. But in John Jones' three next fights, he'll also have made about $30 million. So really, Francis just ducked because he was going to need a bigger contract than John. So, and he wasn't going to have to fight for the 600 grand for surreal that every, or John that he got for surreal that everybody talks about. They were going to give him a new contract before he would have broke $10 million in his first fight. Guaranteed. He'd have broke $10 million in his rematch if he won. And he'd have broke $10 million again after that. He was going to get like seven or eight guaranteed plus points. So he would have got $30 million anyway. Truth is he went to the PFL who pays fighters shittier. Because even though he said he wanted to go to a place that treats them better, he said he demanded health care for all fighters. He went to a place that didn't offer it. And now the place he left does offer it. Uh, Francis sold his ass out for a spot on the board of the African PFL because he thinks it's going to be worth a fortune. And he's a board member. That's my opinion. Usman. So, yeah, like, um, we know, uh, Fighters don't make the best decisions. That's why they get punched in the face for a living. Um, but here I am continuing to do research. Let's say Maria Agapova got signed to a three-fight deal, had one win, two losses. And um, from what I've researched real quick, it seems like she got a better deal if she started off on the 10-10, 12-12, when the, whatever it was back then um, in the Sabina Mazo fight. 20-20, uh, and 20, she wins the fight. That's 40, wins the performance bonus for uh, submitting her in the third round. It's 90,000 um, with uh, with the uh, 
all the sponsorships and extra bullshit that comes out on top of that, 94000 it's like, I constantly go back to, um, if somebody like Maria Agapova is getting paid 94000 Andre Arlovsky should be getting paid two and a half, three million dollars just to show up and get his ass knocked out in the ring. Just solely based on the veteran of his, of, of his career, uh, the legacy of his career, holding a fucking belt. And that's what I just don't understand with these uh, fighter contracts. Because uh, we'll talk about the boxing and whatnot. Not one person can name anybody on the undercard of that Usyk Fury fight. Nobody. It's better times probably. Better times probably can. No one else because D Baby's not here. Better times. No, I cannot. I only watched it for the Fury <laughs> to watch Fury and Ur Usyk. But look, about the fighter pay, I think what people don't understand is that what Dana is doing, that he's basically using all that money to reinvest back into the sport. That's the only reason it's as big as it is now. Because yeah. of what he's doing with the performance center. And he does take care of his athletes. If they get fucked up in that octagon, he takes care of them. As far as like with them going to the hospital and shit. So it's bro, not... Done all, bro, and they paid for it to go legal all over Earth on better. better. Like, they got it legal in France and then Bellator went to Paris. Yeah, and you know New saying? York. Remember how corrupt <laughs> New York was? Yeah. Yeah, they spent tens of millions of dollars on that. Like they're building a whole sport. So Yeah, know. they're not they're not NFL level yet. I believe once they reach that level, then yes, fighters will start receiving what they deserve. But as of right now, it's still in it's still like it's like a toddler right now. It's not it's not it's not there yet. And, but it, yeah, it but will be there one day. Good. People are always going to compare it on the level of, so like, look at Maria Agapova, like we were just talking about, right? So if she comes out and she performs and she does well, um, she makes 150, 200 grand in a year, right? For her first year. There are legitimately NFL players who make a quarter million dollars their first year in the league. I've looked it up. I've been into it. And they go out and play 17 fucking games for that money. They perform 17 times, and not for 15 minutes. They're, they're performing for more than that. And I don't give a fuck what you say. I understand fighting is fighting, and you're getting punched, but I have no interest in being a fucking offensive lineman or a defensive lineman. That's a dirty fucking job. No, that's a bench player, though. The, like I think a practice player makes 100K just like as a signer. But what I'm saying to you is you when you come into the league, unless you're something special, you get a couple hundred grand for your first year. That's my point. A lot of guys come in, get one, two year contracts. They only want one year, two year contracts because they're not going to get a bag. They all feel like they can go out and prove themselves. And some of them do, and some of them don't. Um, I do agree with the sentiment, though. I think it should be, uh, I think it should be 35 and 35 minimum. I understand, like, maybe the first two fights where they call them developmental fights, doing like 25, 25 where you could make a hundred grand for your first two fights. But I think it should be 35, 35 minimum after that. Um, you know, just, just my opinion. I think it's, you know, that's 70 grand to fight. If you win, uh, it's still a hundred grand. If you lose all three fights of your fights in all three of your fights in a year. Um, I do think the marker should move. I think the bonuses should go up, but I just don't know what certain fighters want for the amount of time, and fights that they have in the UFC. I'm not being an asshole, but I just I don't know what they want for that. Like Agapova made over a hundred grand in a year, and whatever. I, all right, we're done on that one. Chael Sutton says he's got a thing with Jorge Masvidal that will be eight rounds, two minutes each. I think he said two minutes each. He might not have said that, but he said eight rounds. 10 to 12 ounce gloves and it's going down in October and he's legit known about it since 299. Um, yep. They're legit boxing from the looks of it in October. Jorge and Chael. I can't fucking wait. I, I can't fucking wait. 
I'm so motherfucking excited. Isn't Chell like so much bigger than him though? Who cares? So much I older as well. I I don't care. I want to see Chael beat him up so I can hear Chael talk about it on every show he goes on for the next six fucking years. That, that's it. I just want to hear Chael talk about it all the time. Oh, I don't even give a Whatever. fuck about watching the fight, man. I want to watch Chael light him on fire on the mic. That's what I want to watch. The fucking presser will be great. He is bro. going to if- set Jorge on fucking fire, and it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> 